Hello, and welcome to my very brief and very non-in-depth uh, walkthrough of how I connected my Logitech G29, or G920 in this case, to Arma, and made it work in such an efficient way. I mean, it's not amazing, but it does work. Um, so first thing I did was I went to Logitech G Hub, which I already had downloaded. I'll have a download link in the description if you'd like it. Um, and I, the first thing I did was spiked up my sensitivity, and that's what I thought was the problem, and it wasn't. Then I decreased the range, um, decreasing the range down to 180 degrees, and that is the lowest that logic will go. Uh, and what that effectively does is that makes Arma think the range of the wheel is only as much as 180 degrees. So that decreases the amount of wheel turn per wheel turn in game, um, so you, you don't have to crank the wheel over every time you want to make a little little drift to the left. Um, after that, I turned down the snapback or the spring centering strength down to 50. Uh, Arma does not have any or at all force feedback, and it's purely auditory based. Um, and you, you want to turn that down because uh, the feed rate uh, is just too high in the game, so I turned it down to 50. That seemed like a pretty good, uh, pretty good number. That's just what worked for me. Next on is the pedals, and the pedals. I did nothing to. I thought they were pretty okay. Now the dead zone in game, uh, you can tweak that a little bit. For me, it was a little bit annoying. I got about half a pedal press before it reacted, but you can change that however you'd like. I do recommend combining your pedals. I did have a lot of trouble when adding the brake or reverse feature inside the, the vehicle controls. Um, for whatever reason, the brake is also bound to the X rotation uh, of the controller, which is the wheel rotation. And so if the wheel is off center just a little bit, the value would turn to 1 and you'd shoot all the way back. So I just bound that to a button, um, and then I later bound it to a button and my clutch so I could be deactivated when I'm not pressing that button. Um, combining the pedals uh, makes that a certain axis is divided into two. So you have a plus and a minus axis, that's how Armour does it. So if you have the pedal, or the accelerator, bound to the, um, let's say, Y plus axis. I know that's not the axis, but let's just use that. That's the Y plus, it'll go and go forwards, and then the Y minus will be the brake, and that will go backwards. In the video, I did not have that because I was just screenshotting some Logitech stuff, and I found that, and I do highly recommend that. Um, using that. I, I do believe that will work exponentially better. In this video I will cover the, the the good and the bad of this wheel. A lot of it is just imprecision and the big thing is with the hat switch. The only way to control um, a viewport or a cannon inside the game is that hat switch. And because I do not have the, G9, uh, the G29, I do not have that little rotator on the bottom right. Um, so that hat switch is very imprecise, it's just a 1-0 binary, and I do recommend using the mouse. I did say in this video that uh, it's garbage, and it is. Just use the mouse. Um, yeah, and I really do hope you enjoy this video. If not, that's perfectly okay. You have entitled your own opinions. I have booted up Arma and cut out all the, the boring stuff, because Arma loading up isn't quite amazing. So if you see here at Logitech G-Hub, that's because I edited this and now the controller is going through G Hub and G Hub is editing it and now it's presented to the game in uh, as G Hub. So customize. This is my best guess at how everything is. This top one here. If I rotate the wheel, it's not mounted to my desk currently. This is about half rotation. That's full, um, and that that shows up. And the sensitivity is all the way up, um, just so you know you can read it better. Now the sensitivity or the pedals. Is, I didn't touch it because I thought they were okay. Um, so flat is one to one, and zero is basically half to uh, about a quarter. And the dead zone here is what I was fiddling with a lot. The max is ten, which is about seventy-five percent of your pedal, and about eighty percent of, uh, or, or I'm sorry, twenty percent of your wheel. So that's about about a quarter rotation of the wheel to one hundred and eighty degrees, which is full bottom. Um, and then the pedals here, and then this one I didn't touch because I didn't, I don't use it because of the uh, axis issue. Now that's that. Um, you know, you've seen it. You can take a screenshot. I don't really mind if you if you take it. The views here, um, I'm not going to go through them all. I already have them mapped out on the uh, 
Logitech photo there. But um, yeah. Now another thing to note here is the force feedback coming from Logitech G Hub uh, based on I think it's bass, I'm not sure, but there is force feedback as you can hear. So I'm just gonna hold that and make it go quiet. As you saw the wheel moved in there. Now in that header is a very special exception because the wheel if you he see here I'm holding A, um, it's only 90 degrees in either direction. So that's going to split your 180 degrees rotation that you just set in Logitech D-Hub in half. So now a 90 degree rotation is 45, and then moving all the way down to 180 degrees is going to take it up to max. Alright, uh, that's just that, and the force feedback does go down as you're moving, because the, the bass or the rumble of the engine idling does go down as well. I'm not really sure how the force feedback goes. Well, if you make it this far in the video, I thank you. Um, I believe that most people are just here for the informational piece. But uh, the demonstration was fun, and the entire making of this video was very fun. Uh, in this time, I was waiting for a response from someone on Discord, and they have not responded. So that was nice. Um, if you liked it, good. That means I did a good job myself. Um, yeah, and I wish you all a nice night. Or you, or a group. I don't know if I can know. Uh, yeah.